Yo, it's your boy Jumanji. I'm here with American Grime inside the building with the one and only Flodan. Easy, 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 easy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we just wanted to sit down and ask you a few questions, man, about just grime in general. Yeah. So um, with us coming from America, like how do you view grime and like how grime has expanded and, and reached kind of like a global level at this point? Um, well, forgetting how global it is, for me, grime is like a, our culture, our, um, our London, UK, but it started in London, form of expression, mm -hmm. a way to be original, also still in the, for, in the format of street culture, which was there before grime, but it's still an original take, original sound and some um, old-fashioned values from sound system. Yeah. That's what I think grime is. Yeah. Um, I think it will go global or is getting global because of the elements that existed before grime which are implemented into grime. I think um, one of the things that separates grime from other genres is just this an entire culture of just radio, um, putting out tunes, like traveling, like grime is a very much live experience as much as it is a recorded one. And um, so with that said, what do you kind of see as like the highlights of like what, what make grime grime right now, as far as like live experiences and what really pulls people in? Um, right now, I think what's really pulling people in, which is its probably strongest thing is the live part, the point where you can tell a grime artist on stage amongst any artists. Mm -hmm. um, crowd response is crowd response, but the energy that the, that the specific performer's giving off, yeah. it's very obvious when they're from a grime background. Yeah. Whether it's the delivery, whether it's the aggression, whether it's even just the sharp cadence of yeah. delivery mm -hmm. when it comes to like lyrical content. Um, to me, that's like, being someone that's about the art form, to me, that's the highlight. Um, big shows and and mixing it up with the so-called big worldly art um, artists. Like you got guys like Skepta um, from the grime culture, from the grime scene, from the UK, up up there with the best of them. So I think it's like them type of highlights there just show that it's a force to be reckoned with, and it's a art form just like any other. Yeah. Do um, you have any uh, any thoughts of collabing with with any artists from other places? Like, no, myself, I'm like just I just want to work with the people that I vibe with. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't dream of working with someone I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. Um, so even I respect loads of people's work and I think there's some sick MCs out there. Yeah. Sometimes I think to get into the studio with them and just work feels weird. Or it feels like I would be trying or I wouldn't be reaching my comfort level of you just that being vibe me. First. Yeah, so yeah. all that has to be hashed out before I can say, yeah, I want to sure. work with this yeah. one or that one. So it's not really that for, for me anyway. Definitely. What are you guys thinking? I, I mean, I, I totally, I'm in agreement. I'm like a, a huge proponent of knowing who I'm working with. I, I've went through my years of working with different people. I've had producers send me like 30 beats. They were all dope. Get in the studio with them and I'm like, yo, I want to get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I've literally been like, I, I've literally been like, I, I've, li I've literally been like, I don't care how good your beats are. Like, I really like right now I feel trapped. And like, that's like the worst feeling is like, you want to work with people that make you feel free to express and things like that. So I respect that. And yeah. Yeah. It's about the comfort zone for yeah, me. Like, totally. Obviously, there's a level of professionalism that has to be applied, mm -hmm. especially when a producer sends you a beat. But for me, I've been through that situation where I'm sitting down looking at a producer that don't know me, I don't know them, and we're pretending we're trying to make something happen. Mm -hmm. It's cold. It's and like it's like, really it's like I think that's just down to the fact that, yeah, it's business mm -hmm. and money has to be made, and your name and your voice or your voice and his name works. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so therefore, let's just get, get this done. So, at times, I've offer myself up to them situations but mm -hmm. my preference my preference 
is to just be in my com comfort zone, whether it's my studio or a studio, but just not caring yeah. Yeah. about the outcome. Yeah, right. totally. So um, for our audience that's watching that doesn't know you, tell us a little bit about how you came up. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna take you that far back. Yeah. I can just talk about Graham from, from the start of Graham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just like being from East London, being from Bow, being a part of um, just watching the UK deliver my voice, but before I was using my voice or my thoughts with the drum and bass scene, with Jungle, with our, with the legends like Stevie Hyper D, MC Depp, Shabba, Skibidi, these people I went to school listening to on, on tapes, Walkman and things like that. Okay. So um, that kind of developed my love for the UK sound or the UK tape because I've, obviously I grew up listening to re uh, reggae, having Caribbean parents and stuff like that. So Where are your parents from? Uh, my parents are born in, in England, but um, my dad's parents are Jamaican and my mum's parents are from Antigua and St. Kitts. So. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, so then just growing up, listening to drum and bass, wanting to be a drum and bass MC, didn't quite get that all far into it, um, became a teenager, turned to like 18, 19, then Wiley one day just said, yeah, I've got a new style of music, I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> forget this drum and bass stuff, um, this is it, we didn't have a name for it, obviously, but I just said, yeah, this is this is it because it's not as fast as drum and bass, but it's still got the energy mm -hmm. and it's still got the other elements that I need to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I can just use my own voice. I can stop copying these drum and bass guys and stop copying what I watch on MTV or so forth. Just make I, it your own. Yeah, like I found the perfect palette, yeah. perfect rug to just be myself. So yeah. it's like, yeah, thanks to Wiley because he, he was always not just wanting to be a performer, he wanted to be a producer, he wanted mm -hmm. to do it all, play records, make Everything. them. So um, having him next to me was quite easy to just say, okay, what is this, the new shit? Okay, cool, I'm gonna yeah. go. Um, that was the start of me making music and the start of Graham. You know, it's crazy as you said that, it's like, I was a, a beatboxer, and while I was beatboxing, I was listening to like these hip hop kids spit, and I was like, I think I could do this. So I started rapping, and that's how I got into rapping. And maybe like eight months into rapping, I found drum and bass. Yeah. And I was like, can't fuck with them. What is this? Yeah, I, just, <laughs> yeah, I remember just listening to like Skibbity and like X Men and like Whoa. just going in, just like, oh, these guys are so good. IC3, yeah. you know? Yeah. Just going in. And I was just like, they were so good that I used to do the same thing, just imitate them, you know what I mean? Like, we <laughs> rapping over drum and bass. And I'm like, I'm obviously not British, but like, yeah. I would, uh, you yeah. know, I'd be like, but you're full ahead of the game. Up. <laughs> with that type of stuff, I'm, like, amongst your. Arsenal, you're ahead of the game. Oh, of, yeah. like, like, I remember going to America with my music and my cousins are like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> but they wasn't, they, they was confused, but they was happy to hear like it gets better than whatever they've been exposed yeah, yeah, to yeah, because totally. they was sure that they got the best. There's mm -hmm. another level. Rapping, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? mm -hmm. But no, there's other stuff going on and I think the UK is very influential <clears throat> with that scene. Absolutely. With the fact of like, going back to the 70s and with, What's his name? The guy with all the teeth and chains. Um, he's even from the eight, the eighties. What's um, Slick, Slick Rick? Rick. Yeah, Slick, yeah, yeah. Slick Rick the ruler. <laughs> hey! But then even with like reggae music, like there was a time where the UK MCs were setting the pace yeah. for what Jamaica was doing already, but exactly. changed it up, added some speed, <laughs> yeah. and like yeah, very I, uh, influential. I I totally. Um, I mess with what, with what you're saying because what I've found is that like there's certain artists in America, right, that you can't touch. Like, and what I mean about that is like Erica Badu, yeah, the, like Lauren Hill, like, like, I agree. like, like these artists, you know, that even if they got signed to a label, the label's like, just do what you you've been doing because you seem to get it. Can't mess up that. <laughs> but a lot of the other music, it gets tainted by the management and the labels and the production, and you know, p pop music is actually like. 
it comes down to a chord, like notes, you know what I mean? Yes, I thought and that had stuff like... A formula, a science. A formula, yeah, a formula. It's, down to, it's down to a science. So that's what a lot of the American artists you're hearing, they're, they're becoming part of this formula where they're throwing this in, they're throwing this in, all the labels. And what drew me to the UK sound, no matter what the genre, was that it seemed untouched, like yeah. the authenticity behind it. Like, I, I just, I started... Uh, just getting into different artists out here and I was like damn like never heard that before and like you could just tell that was solely that person that was that individual's music there's so, less uh, and less on that going on in the UK though going on now no you think it's being it's starting to get like yeah because I feel like I don't know, industry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. money yeah jobs. you thought the same thing about rap like in America mm -hmm. that's why we do grind <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like yo this is dead <laughs> yeah, like, um, it's not fair to say it's dead though. It's not I don't nice. think it's dead. I, Nothing please, dies. It's just listen, no, just, just like in the, in the sense that the rap that they're pu putting out now, like, is just kind of like to a standard that we just feel like wasn't where where we wanted rap to be. Yeah. You know, like it wasn't. Satisfying what about Kendrick Lamar? Now. What about Boogie from the West Coast? Yeah, I mean, there is there yeah, is Jay that. Cole. Uh, J. Cole, yo, uh, Black. A lot of people call him Six Lack. Yeah, he's there, a G. Oh. There is that, but G. there's also a huge like an undeniably large mm -hmm. presence of like. What what people same have come shit, to call mumble shit. rap, yeah. but it's like it's like SoundCloud it's like rap that doesn't yeah. that doesn't take. There's no lyricism, you know, right? They, the, 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 it, they put no energy or passion yeah. into they the craft. They lower the bar for the lyricism. Skill. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bar for lyricism is like. What do you like me, me and my exists. me and my grandma do math or something like that? What are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? Good music always exists, and bad music has always existed. It's always been there. I agree. Um, and it's like, who do we blame when? It's, it goes big yeah. and viral. <laughs> like, Someone's blame, touching it. Yeah, do you get what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I, just, it. I don't really want to <laughs> judge. I just like say, okay, that's what's going on. That's not for me. Right, I'm this doing is my why thing. I'm doing what yeah, I'm doing. Cool. Oh, that's what's going on. That's cold. I would love to be involved. So yeah. it's just, I like to try and just be as honest as I can with that element of it. Yeah. Because um, there's so many things going on that I can't control. Yeah. Anyway. That's life though, right? So. There's so many yeah. things going on that we just can't control. Yeah. You got to figure out what you like can control, which isn't even that much. But you got to figure out what you could. <laughs> yeah, you like figure, this, yeah, this, like you can control this, 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 this right. whole yeah, room yeah, right yeah, here. You yeah, definitely yeah. got control of this. Seems <laughs> that's like. about it. So yeah. that's where I find my peace <laughs> yeah. and I find my yeah, comfort. Totally. So uh, what are you working on these days? Um, running the label. The label is called Spent Show Music. Um, just trying to like feel that void of missing where where I feel there's a style of grime that's not being made anymore because of again what we said popularity and certain mm -hmm. things yeah. happen so it creates more magnetism towards that, towards that mm -hmm. style so it's like thing. okay then let me create a place where what happens or what I like happens yeah, yeah. Um, rather than moan and just say it's dead mm. part of the solution yeah. um, she's honestly saying that all the time like yeah. instead of being like no you're doing this wrong just be like okay this is how I like it done you yeah. know what I mean and like you Definitely gotta be a leader so. and, and, and that authenticity is felt like you know what I mean like I don't think people can touch it like in terms of longevity in the industry I hope so but yeah, yeah. I see that yeah. from other brands and stuff right. like that that haven't that, that have sustained through whatever wave is yeah. happening yeah. well so waves like, are waves right simple. trends yeah. don't trends <laughs> waves crash and tre and <laughs> they all do <laughs> and tr and trends only last for a certain amount of years exactly. so, so um, but, you know if you love this and you want to be in it you got to do what you're doing you know to yeah, keep it real way. keeping it honest the hard way I, yeah. I, I call it the hard way but it's not that it's harder it's just you got to not be distracted by like all the opportunities to go astray you know what i mean just keep mm. doing your thing stay in your lane that's what i think or enjoy everything yeah <laughs> just yeah. enjoy like because to be like nah that ain't that's not exactly. happening it, it was just it's still gonna happen well, and you have to keep an open yeah. mind you know so it's like i'm not doing that trap shit Oh, I'm, not, I'm not doing, doing that. Do that. <laughs> Fuck it, I ain't doing it, bro. No, I'm talking about. Uh, no, but that's just me, though. You know what I mean? Like but everybody's but free you, to do what they want. There must be something in trap that you must think, but that's cold, though. Oh uh, yeah, no. Nah, oh, no, it's no, cold. The thing I like listening. I like listening to it, but I, I don't like making it. Like it's like a weird don't line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just like to enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Like I don't need to jump into every lane but, to, but to get to where I'm going. But right, there's trap pro production. Then there's the trap style of rapping. Okay. Yeah. Like True. there's a way to do, 
your type of flow, and I'm not saying you have to, I'm talking about yeah, me, yeah, no, like, but I like I mess with doing the 140 flow, like a lot of trap music is 140. Like, Those beats are hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're bringing the lyricism, like the reason trap isn't that great in the US because the bar for the lyricism is way down. Yeah, yeah. fucking awful. You, how many UK, <laughs> gr oh, how, <laughs> how, how bottom, many UK grime here, artists are rapping over it. trap beats right now? Loads. Loads. Yeah, loads. Yeah. And the, beats, the beats are hard, and that's just that. Yeah. Um, I also think that sometimes it's defined by what you say on the beat anyway, um, totally. how you yeah. and all that shit. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, back to your point of saying I ain't doing it. It's not even about <laughs> not doing it. It's not about not doing it or doing it. It's about just listening and learning. Yeah, and yeah exactly. Appreciating because it's some new shit. Yeah. Every yeah, 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 exactly. And you can't like turn your ears off. You know what I mean? You soak it in regardless. You like take the best you're gonna be infected. Yeah, exactly. You take just the find the good stuff and be like, I like that part of it, and that's yeah. cool. Fuck that. Yeah. I, I do that for my production as well. I mean, I don't really, I don't, I don't even really listen to trap, but like, if I see like the same producer on like really big names and literally like all over scenes, like the guy who produces for Six Nine also produced Drake and like, yeah, you know, like, like really you big, it. huh? I'm sick. Like really big tracks and whatnot. I was just like, let me find one interview where he's in the studio or something, and maybe he knows something that I don't. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, uh, always possible, especially. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. That, that, that's why I'm always interested in it. Like, you know, it doesn't mean I have to listen. <laughs> no, no, it it or, or even make it, but it's a, yeah. As I, a, they just might know as something. A create, know. As a creator, you. Yeah. I would. I'm hungry for new stuff and new yeah. stuff. So even if I think this ain't me. It took me a I'm long time to, to learn mm -hmm. what gross beat was. Yeah. I was just like, yo, everyone's using that. Okay. What's that? What gross is that? beat, see, it's like a thing. So in Fruity Loops, um, yeah, son. they have it. <laughs> 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 it's a straight weed, that American thing, bro. Right? The base <laughs> no, no tobacco, but, um, bro. But yeah, it's just a way to manipulate, like, if you have a melody and then you can immediately, you know, make it like half time. Or do other things, you know. You can make it turn it into like triplets, sixteenths, or something like that. Oh, well, what, if you're that not what in, we're doing with the hi hats. No, they well they do do that for that, but they do it for like melodies. They do it for everything. Cold, cold. Um, cold. Say no like more. if you take like yeah. an, or, or like an arpeggiator yeah, or something like yeah, that, up, and yeah. you slow it down, all the little weird artifacts of that being Start slowed down, spread out. It just makes it really. It has a very interesting sound to it. There <laughs> so, you go. Which is why everyone Whose does idea it. Idea was that. I don't know, but it was in, <laughs> I don't it care. Was, it was yeah. in the it was, it was, yeah. Every it. trap <laughs> producer uses that, and yeah. I, like, like I'm like, there has to be something to that. Like they had, like the, everyone can't be using it for it not to be good. And I just tried. I have a similar type thing. I don't have exactly that because I don't work in fruity loops anymore. But um, okay. But I, yeah, yeah. But there, there are uh, other, other things ways that are almost exactly yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. But um. Yeah, it was, you know, so even just something like that, like it's just a little thing. There but you go. It's, but it's, Thanks to the shop man, you know about that. Yeah. And move on. <laughs> and move on. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask, man, um, you work with The Bug. Yeah, definitely. Dropped a couple big tunes. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like, man? What was that experience like? And what's it like, like having like a track, you know, go big where everybody knows you now off, off of that track? Like, what is that like? Um... Like, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it was like a, like to me, it, when it was, by the time it was a big track, time had passed. Yeah. So like, I wasn't aware of everything at every stage. Yeah. But then it become like, obvious when I'm across the world in Mexico or somewhere mm. and they're saying like, Skeng! That's him! Okay, so like, I'm accepting from that point, oh shit, big tune that I've done <coughs> something that's gonna stay with people forever. Mm. That's, so that's cold. It just kind of makes me think, all right, now I know that I can, so let me continue. Mm. It's kind of a motivation mm -hmm. to just like say, all right, then it's, success is not always in one way or like especially when you're a musician you think okay then it needs to be this it needs to go there and mm -hmm. everyone needs to know that now you might not get that mm -hmm. but there's still a way for you to sustain and continue and grow with other different outcomes and yeah i found out that so so it keeps me here yeah it's amazing yeah motivation yeah yeah definitely. i always say like um when something that you worked for is successful it's an opportunity to work harder because like it just gives you more opportunities to work mm -hmm. okay yeah. now there are more collabs to make now there's new tunes now new people know me that i need to go hit yeah it's just new new like 
just trying to reach there again or trying to better yourself or better the vibes especially with a song like that or one of them songs there that like, it was never the intent intention because i i look at the bug as like a a weird producer mm -hmm. and i look at myself as a weird mc so i'm <laughs> thinking well this weird shit don't necessarily go that far all the time right you thought it'd but be more fun. underground yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and it stayed that way but it's still like it's just dominant on the underground. yeah so totally. that's yeah. important as well see that's so it's he's just a professional guy and yeah. reached out to management when i was um doing my roll my roll deep stuff and it was like yeah we need an mc um actually it was for a, a, a mc in the group his name's rico so the bug requested him to come to his radio show on radio one he was doing a guest set and he wanted a load of collaboration mcs to come and jump on his stuff Rico never turned up. Oh, I got a call. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, Damn, I bet he Thanks regrets so that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always remind him still. Like, yeah. I got up on that one, but at the same time, um, <laughs> it's just my attitude over everything else because I thought, hmm, would Rico really have liked this anyway? Like, yeah. <laughs> this is not grime. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. yeah. So it was just like, okay, yeah, let me just get this right because. And so your open mind actually yeah, yeah. led you and to be able it. to make that collaboration. Because, yeah, yeah, because I found a way. Because <laughs> the beats weren't necessarily me, but I just right. found a way to be me. Yeah. And then he called back, was like, yo, I like what you've done. Do you want to come in the studio? Mm -hmm. I said, all right, cool, open minded again. Didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Just, go with the flow sometimes. Just started doing music. Um, and, good, and good things come when you don't have them intentions of trying to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how I think it works anyway. The experience. Yeah. yeah. And being happy with what yeah. you produce and create. Yeah, and yeah, that's just, it. Or happy it while you're yeah. just while you're making the music. As long as you're happy, there's potential big out like good outcomes. Yeah. Just to say that. Sick. Awesome. Hey. So um who you say you have your label, who's on the label spent show? Oh shit. Um myself. YGG is a young group uh, from yeah, North young London. Brown girls. Mm. Uh, Ghostly, another uh, young yeah, MC yeah. coming yeah. from um, Cold. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is very ill. He's doing Lord of the Mics. Should be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghostly, yeah. YGG, myself, and a singer called Ruby Black. Amazing. Um, yeah, just trying to vary the vibes and. It's not even about who's on the label, it's about the label has a job to do and anyone else doing their job in the right way that can potentially play a part in the Spent Shell sound or the Spent Shell music. Right. So there's, I just put out an EP and um, there's people that's not specifically in the Spent Shell studio every day but they're on the tracks. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, yeah, but the, na the names I mentioned, I work closely with them and they get first options and everything that <laughs> I love the fact that you have a vocalist in there um, yeah. because yeah. that's like you know I'm a I'm very into R&B and uh, I found that Sorry, let me turn on the fan just to make sure that we don't yeah no doubt okay. I, I found that when you uh, <laughs> I, I was actually telling books on the train the first time like I really saw uh, a vocalist over 140 was when KDB worked with Magnetic Men with that, yeah. with that, that was cold. with that yeah. full orchestra in the yeah, studio, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was like the perfect mixture yeah. of angelic vocals with a demonic sound. Yeah, and that's what I'm making. And that's that's what I that's, <laughs> that's yo let me what, on the label, yeah, bro. Yeah. And I was getting, <laughs> yeah, what, um, no, I'm saying my, that's yeah, like that's I'm trying to do as yeah, well. that's something that that like means a lot to me. Uh, I've been working with a lot of vocalists, so that's cool. Yeah, I just need it to be varied, like how I heard music in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just feel that um, what makes the grime, what makes grime special in its early days, it was that it was really influenced by everything that happened before. Mm -hmm. I feel that new grime is influenced by... Old grime. Yeah. Which is diluted. Not, of so it's from, getting thinner. Yeah. So the yeah. pool is starting to get so much thinner on what people are trying to do. Yeah. I'm just trying to widen it back. Sick. Yeah, There's some dudes like that's... pushing stuff like that, like levels, yeah, like yeah, yeah. they kind of like push the boundaries there, you know, yeah, like exactly. push against the bubble. Definitely. I, I think that's kind of like, in a way, like what we're seeing and experiencing here, like the more that, like personally, I know I'm here and I'm seeing what people are into here. And it's like, man, their, their range of diversity is sick, you know, it's like, 
it's more than you would think that these artists are listening to. But it's the same with us over on our end. You know, it's like we come from like all these varied backgrounds. Like, sorry, bro. no, it's good. Like I was just literally telling them that uh, I played tuba for 12 years. Sick. So like I was, but you know, <laughs> like what a random in instrument that I'll probably yeah. never touch again for the rest of my life. But because I played it for so long, I learned how to read music. I was about to say that. And yeah. I was reading bass That's music at like 12 years old. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> so those little things. Up, and on YouTube now trying to learn that shit. Yeah. 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 Books down here. Yeah. Books says he plays violin, viola, I bass, violin. stand up bass. Like, you know, just. What's up? You guys can do all this horn and string stuff. That's like nothing but yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> we need a we need yeah. we need a resurgence of life. Yeah. So for us, like the elements of grime, what made grime was like appealing in different ways. You know what I mean? Like I came from marching bands and football games and stuff, cool. where like you hear that drum line, and you know you're snares. like, yeah, the snares are going off sick, snares. and then you hear grime and you're like, you're like, hey, the snare is popping, the yeah. horns are hitting, you know, what I mean? and then the bass, boom, you're like, there's my tuba, baby, I'm here. Same thing. Yeah, it's it's elements, same thing. it's like it elements. Is, um, just again, like because this is such a digital based age, mm -hmm. yeah. and like when grime started to get made, it was like on the crossover point where that was still it was about samples and stuff like yeah. that but i just remember everyone always saying no nah, but i want to hear some real instruments though as well mm -hmm. mixing it up because that's where they came from as well they didn't mm -hmm. just come from a digital age they're coming from exactly what you're talking about so that's important to keep mm -hmm. as opposed to just let it fade away yeah totally. But yeah, making something on hardware is insanity. I, I can't really, I, I don't have the patience for it, but sometimes you just don't want to look at a computer screen sometimes. Um, I guess. And I'll I tell you know. that something like the bug doesn't touch a song unless it's hardware. Yeah, yeah I've, like, I've seen that. <laughs> he, uh, I, I knew him from joke. as like an industrial artist for like the longest time. Oh yeah, he's been and around the bug, and the When I first heard the bug, I was like, oh, well this is a cool thing, blah, blah, you know, in like 2007 or something like yeah. that. And I listened to him for years without realizing who he was. Different I was like, names. I know exactly who this person is. He's Definitely. doing this now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he just like, seems like he gets bored. Yeah, yeah it just looks like apparently. he gets bored and just wants yeah. to do more, but doesn't want to ever sell out. Mm -hmm. Which, whatever That's that a, means, yeah. but he mm -hmm. wants to stay true to whatever roots. He's about his he's, authenticity. Yeah, 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 yeah it's it's definitely. And um, yeah, I definitely know that meeting up with him and making the music with him has definitely taught, taught me a lot. I've been there for longer, he's been there for way longer than me. So I'm yeah. Even just plays all vinyl. <laughs> yeah. Like, even, even if they don't have turntables, it's like, I'm not playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy though, like we were, uh, we were speaking with Manga and the kind of topic of selling out also came out. Yeah. And I kind of feel like that's like a, a line that like a lot of artists get to where it's like, you kind of come to that point where it's like, I'm a professional, you know, and I want to be getting paid for what I'm doing because I have bills to pay, you know, yeah. working two jobs is a madness, you know, but at the same time, you want to stay true to your artistry mm -hmm. and you don't want to, you know, kind of disrespect the efforts that you've put into it. So it's like people kind of reach this crutch where it's like, how do I cross that, that line? You know, how do I get over that into that second level without quote unquote selling out yo but here's my question though right yeah. who are the main people who say people sold out the people that the, the people that can't themselves. make it <laughs> they wouldn't yeah, have yeah, to sell out exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. everyone you hear saying sell out it's never the person it's never people in the circle of the person who's making the art like a lot of people you said how long many years has the bug been in music at least 25 years. Okay, and then Scream, wow. right? I'll give an example. Scream with dubstep. They said he sold out because he went to techno, right? But here's my thing. How You're not Scream. How does anyone know? Maybe you know this. I don't know maybe him. Scream. But I'm yeah. saying maybe he did something for so long, he wanted to do something else. And then that's not legal. That, yeah, yeah, right? I mean, I know Scream. That's exactly what That's happened. exactly, yeah. that's like, exactly literally, what he was like, about to say. Like, mouth, that's exactly he literally what he said. said that. That's exactly <laughs> it. He's like... This but, is boring. Yeah. Lofa, they said this, Lofa as well. Lofa said the same thing. It's like, when it's your time to get off the train, it's your time to get off the train. And it's always other and people, it. it's <laughs> always other people chatting about it. But it's like, you know what? I just hope, at least with myself, that I just don't eat, zone that stuff out because I want to do whatever what I want to do when I want to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, I had a wild journey to see that it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, just do your thing. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen people so called sets. I've seen people have number ones, number twos, mm -hmm. number five, number ten. Mm -hmm. 
get called this, get called that, and a full side, full cycle. Their hair still making yeah. music, yeah. Yeah. so it makes no difference. Leave them to it. Um, everyone's gonna say something about everything. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to accept what you can deal with and move accordingly. Turn off your notifications, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Those old Kanye shades, the, like. The hater blockers, yeah. like this. <laughs> you can't see none of them. Best to take care of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess one of the things that we run into is like just the stigma that we're Americans, and because we're doing grime, we're trying to steal grime. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to steal. <laughs> Have it. <No. laughs> <laughs> that, that's by far, out of all the times that we've repeated that line to different people, yeah, that was happened. the best reaction we've had. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Yeah. Take it. He said it Um. That's great. Um. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think us being American has anything to do with whether or not we can do grime? No, I don't. I do think it matters um, about your execution. Mm -hmm. You do have to pay attention and understand where it's coming from to do your version. Um, but you know, there's no rules. There's yeah. definitely no rules. But I just look at it like this: to say, right, I'm gonna do an R and B track mm -hmm. and approach it how I approach what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fuck it up, mm -hmm. not in a good way. <laughs> so, well. yeah. so it's like that's not me that's me not paying attention to what it is R&B yeah. is yeah. so I would just say that about grime I wouldn't say oh where you're from means you can't do it I just means where you're from might means that you might have a longer language barrier to cross right. or understanding certain nuances to what is going on here but otherwise go for it man. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta do your best to like pay homage to it and like you know and and, really and just like i don't know per, for me personally i'll speak on myself it. he's been listening to it for years yeah i'm like three years in you know like like coming up on four like just i come from a hip-hop background and i'm just like i'm really am just here to to learn more and just to keep doing what i'm doing you know what i mean yeah but i don't i don't like to speak on things that i don't I mean, why, why would I talk if I don't really got anything to say? You know what yeah, I mean? Just, <laughs> I wouldn't even say like it's that deep. Yeah. I would just think People like, make it deep, yo. I think like if you're going to do grime, it's because you want to. Exactly. Like it. Exactly. So that, you must know enough yeah. to go for it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. I, like, if you're really going to approach it like, hmm, grime, there's money over there. I'll say, you're <laughs> joking. <laughs> you must really like you're it. You're joking. <laughs> so, um,. Yeah, like, I just think it's not even that deep. Like, if you're trying to do grime, it's not one of them industries where, like, it's, oh, shit, I invest 10 pounds, get 10 million out. No, yeah. that don't happen. So you're really genuinely probably into it. So, all right, your accent ain't like ours, but so. Mm -hmm. That, to me, makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, what's this guy really going to try and do yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear that. I want to hear that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no, there's definitely no rules. It's definitely been a warm welcome coming out here. Everyone's treated us so nicely and taken us in as like their own. So yeah, we like, appreciate you even sitting with us right now and just yeah, having this discussion. Yeah, people like to feel important or feel appreciated or feel like, right, you, you want to do our thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, come then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a form of showing off a bit, but yeah. we're allowed to do it yeah. now. I think we've got a style <laughs> of music. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so, that's Timbo Slice, the DJ. Timbo Slice, I like that name. That's yeah. Booker, the DJ. That. Okay. Yep. This Books. is. I'm sorry, Books, my bad. Yeah. I ain't giving so out the government, government bro. Name. I ain't giving out the government, baby. <laughs> string them. I thought yo. Books, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Third eye right here, DJ, <laughs> producer. These two both yeah. produce. They're nasty with it. G Major. What, what you got? Bits to show me? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to 
beats for the fun of it. I'm gonna take beats off you, you know, Right, okay. okay. <laughs> Just so you know, it's not. Just so you know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Put like a star on them bitches. No, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to go beat boss. Yeah. <laughs> 